Collins Creatures. I'm here at Zoo America in their desert garden at their desert house. Today I'm going to talk about desert tortoises. Now that is one of their many desert tortoises out on display and the desert tortoises live in the desert garden. So we're going to go to the education building to talk about desert tortoises more in depth. So now we're in their education building, and this is Checkers, one of their education desert tortoises. Now let's talk about the desert tortoise. Desert tortoises can be found in the semi-arid deserts of, the southwest, of southwestern North America, in the states of California, Nevada, Arizona, a tiny part of Utah. They can also be found in the northwestern parts of Mexico. Desert tortoises are a mid-sized tortoise getting around 14 inches in shell length, but when they hatch, they're only around the size of a billiards ball for about two and a half inches, and they can live for several decades well into their 80s. In fact, the oldest tortoise here at the zoo, which we'll see later, is 75 years old. There's some differences between males and females, with the male tortoises usually having longer tails, and the males also have a concave plastron to aid in mating. Many tortoises have what is called a gular horn, which is a protrusion of the plastron, which helps the males fight for mating rights. And the ones on the desert tortoise are very prominent. In the wild, desert tortoises will eat plants native to their environment, including cacti, spikes and all, leafy plants and desert flowers. And in captivity, they will eat a, and at the zoo, they will eat a commercial tortoise diet along with hay. as well as leafy greens and some vegetables. And as a very occasional treat, they'll be given some fruits due to their high sugar content, which, is, which isn't the best for tortoises. And this is a piece of aloe, and I'm going to feed checkers. Since food is a reward for target training and checkers is target trained, I introduce Kelly, one of the education keepers, to talk a little bit about target training. Well, I reward him once he completes the task at hand. This way. There you go. So target training is a method that zoos and facilities will use to communicate with their animals and to guide their animals through various practices that will help them to better their welfare and their lifestyle. For many larger animals, we may use it for veterinary care or for a typical animal husbandry. Uh, but for checkers here, this is actually a form of mental stimulation. So as Colin was able to show, we are able to pick him up and uh, move him around. But this is just fun for him since he is target trained to know to touch his nose to this red ball, which we call a lollipop. And then Colin gives him a piece of food. for tortoises to make sure that they have enough calcium in their diet and a way to metabolize it. If they don't, they will develop something called metabolic bone disease or MBD for short, which is basically when their body extracts calcium from their bones to make up for the lack of calcium in their diet. And a way to prevent this is to make sure they have enough calcium in their diet, giving them UVB lighting, as well as making sure they have a good calcium to iron ratio. And you can keep desert tortoises as pets, but since they are threatened in the wild, you should only get them from credible breeders and make sure that they are captive bred. 
And since tortoises live for a very long time, maybe very, maybe even outliving their owners, many people think they can just release their tortoise into the wild if they can't take it, take care of it anymore. But you should not do this because desert tortoises and other tortoises can carry diseases like the common cold and transmit it to wild populations. So now we're gonna to go to their desert building to talk about their habitat. So now we're back in the desert house in front of the desert garden so we can talk about their natural habitat, which is near rocky areas where they will dig their burrows. And these burrows will become abandoned because they dig a lot of burrows. And that is why they're designated keystone species. A keystone species is an animal or plant that is vital to the survival of an ecosystem. If this species was to disappear, the ecosystem would collapse. Many, some of the animals that rely on the desert tortoise's burrows are roadrunners, and burrowing owls, which live in with the desert tortoise in the desert garden, as well as rattlesnakes, and Gila monsters, who are also at the zoo, just not in this enclosure. And they rely on the burrows to get out of the scorching sun or to make a home to raise young. So now let's talk about the enclosure. There are two levels in the desert garden, the bottom of which is where the desert tortoises are supposed to stay, but sometimes they will climb up over the rocks and get into the upper level, which is where the birds can be, but the birds can basically have the entire desert garden. And the desert garden was modeled to look almost exactly like their natural habitat with the exclusion of wily coyote. This is Arnold, and Arnold is the oldest tortoise at the zoo, being 75 years old. And he's also the oldest animal at the zoo. And what's really cool is that he is the father of all but one, being the mother of all of the tortoises on exhibit and in education, including some younglings who we're going to see next. So these are the young desert tortoises. They're not really babies, they're approaching their second birthday and they are kept in the night section, but unlike the other nighttime animals who have a reversed day-night cycle, their day-night cycle is the same as ours. And their names are Autumn, Pumpkin, Maple, and Boo. So I hope you enjoyed my video on desert tortoises and I'd like to thank Zoo America for letting me use Checkers, their education desert tortoise, for my video. So thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and I'll see you next time on Collins Creatures.